Hello my friend, today we will take a look at two compact Micro Four Thirds Panasonic cameras, the LX100 Mark II and the GX9. If you are a regular viewer of this channel, you probably know that I am a fan of Micro Four Thirds system and I have had an opportunity to test both of these cameras in the second half of 2018. I took the GX9 on my trip to Sardinia and Corsica, I have made a video about that, and I had the LX100 Mark II for about 3 weeks here in Western Slovakia. I will say that I like both of these cameras. In this video we will take a look at key similarities and differences between these cameras to help some of you decide which one is more suitable for you and I will also talk a bit about which one did I choose and why. The most fundamental difference between these two cameras is that LX100 Mark II has fixed 24-70mm full-frame equivalent field of view lens with f1.7 to f2.8 aperture, whereas the GX9 is interchangeable lens camera. It is not really possible to tell which one is better option, since that depends purely on your specific needs. A lens on LX100 Mark II provides very useful and all-round usable focal range, suitable for everything from landscapes to portraits. Optical characteristics are also reasonably good for this type of lens. Having fixed lens allows the whole camera to be smaller, which also has to do with multi-aspect ratio sensor, but I will talk about that later. This solution is also more suitable if you just don't want to bother with buying and changing lenses. GX9 lets you use very wide variety of Micro Four Thirds lenses, like 20mm f1.7 Mark II, which is my most favorite lens for the GX9, or you can even use something like 200mm f2.8 if that is your thing. This provides much more versatility, of course. There is a lot of Micro Four Thirds lenses that provide better image quality than LX100 Mark II lens, especially the primes and premium lenses like 12 to 60 mm Leica, but these cost extra money of course, and most of them are larger. Both GX9 and LX100 Mark II are very well made cameras, both feel premium, and I like the materials on both. There is a size difference, LX100 Mark II is noticeably smaller and lighter, but that mostly depends on the lens that you use on the GX9. Both cameras offer great size to performance ratio, as I will explain later. I also like minimalistic design on both, both also look a bit vintage, which is also important with this type of camera. According to my information, the dust resistance, which was a problem on LX100 Mark I, was improved on Mark II. The main difference in terms of the handling is that the GX9 uses classic DSLR style controls, whereas the LX100 Mark II uses film camera style controls with shutter speed dial and aperture ring on the lens. Which one you prefer is a matter of preference. I like both styles, so I have no preference here. Other than that, the controls are great on both, especially if you consider the size. I have described the controls more in my separate reviews, which will be linked in the description. Both cameras use the same sensor, it is the new 20 megapixel Micro Four Third sensor, which is also used in G9 and GH5. I have talked a lot about this sensor in previous videos, so here I will just repeat that it has very good dynamic range, which is better than on Canon's APS-C sensors and close to Sony's APS-C sensors. Pictures are very clean up to ISO 1600, you can usually use ISO up to 3400 for digital publishing and ISO 6400 is an emergency option. The main difference is that on GX9 you are always using the whole sensor, like most of the cameras, and it takes 4x3 aspect ratio stills. LX100 Mark II is so-called multi-aspect ratio camera, which means that you have to choose aspect ratio using the switch on the lens, and the camera will take 17 megapixel stills. In practical use, it basically means that with LX100 Mark II, you should crop the image that way if you want to get highest possible resolution. What is especially important for the GX9 and LX100 is that both use Panasonic's new image processing and color science, which is also the same processing as in the G9. Colors are nicely saturated and fairly vibrant, with reasonable amount of contrast. 
ROS work great with my favorite editing software, which is Luminar 3, where I have been getting very results using just AI accent filter and AI sky sliders, which saves me a lot of time, but you can also recover a lot of information from the ROS for heavy edits. JPEGs also look very good out of the camera. I mostly use standard picture style, and I also really like L Monochrome D. LX100 Mark II has stabilized lens, and the optical image stabilization is indeed very effective. It especially helps you while shooting video. GX9 has in-body image stabilization, which is rated for 4 stops, but it is significantly more effective than Sony's 5-stop in-body image stabilization in A6500. If you use stabilized lens on GX9, the in-body image stabilization and optical image stabilization will work together, and this way you can get extremely effective stabilization effect, which will be better than on LX100 Mark II. The difference in image quality will mostly be affected by the lens that you use with the GX9. Lens on LX100 Mark II is really good for the size and for this type of camera. At f1.7 to 2.8 it is very bright, and it is pretty sharp right from wide open, the optical character is also nice, including the rendition of autofocus background, micro contrast, and color rendition. Weakness of this lens is low flare distance, so be careful while shooting against the light. I have tested the GX9 with multiple zoom lenses. 12 to 60 mm f3.5 to 5.6 Lumix is a bit sharper than lens on LX100 Mark II. It has longer focal range, but the aperture is significantly slower. It is still my most favorite non-premium kit lens, it is weather sealed, the build quality is very good, and it is also stabilized. I definitely recommend getting one in a kit if you don't have one already. If you want to keep the size down, you can use 12 to 35 mm f3.5 to 5.6, which is extremely small, but it still has optical image stabilization. Optical qualities are actually surprisingly good on this one, I will make a separate review of this lens. It is a valid option if you want to get almost pocket size. You can also use the GX9 with premium lenses like Leica 12-60mm f2.8, which is my go-to standard zoom lens for Micro Four Thirds, because it offers really beautiful optical character, excellent build quality and optical image stabilization in a very small package. 20mm f1.7 Mark II is my most favorite prime lens for the GX9 because of the size, fast aperture and very good optical qualities. The only disadvantage is that the continuous autofocus doesn't work, but I don't mind that on this lens. 25mm f1.7 and 42.5mm f1.7 are also highly suitable. I also use 7-14mm f4 and 8-18mm f2.8-4 as ultra wide options and 50-200mm f2.8-4 as telephoto option. Links to reviews of these lenses will be in the description. Both cameras use 49-point autofocus system, so here again, the difference will mainly be caused by the lens. Both are more than good enough for intended purposes, like street photography, slowly moving subjects, landscapes, and so on. Focus acquisition speed is great on both, even in low light, so is the accuracy, and you can also use eye tracking. Both behave similarly in video, the autofocus is actually surprisingly accurate and there is no hunting in most situations because of the DFD system. In 4K it is pretty slow, but still usable in usual less challenging situations. Both are significantly faster in 1080p. The display and viewfinder is also the same on both. Display uses 3 inch panel with about 1.2 million dots and it is actually the second best display that I have tested after Nikon Z6. Sharpness and brightness is great and so are the colors and viewing angles. The only difference is that the display on GX9 is tiltable, which is very useful when shooting at low angles or above your head. Viewfinder has 0 0.0 times magnification and 2.76 million dots. It is a sequential field panel, which I don't particularly mind on this type of camera. It is okay to use, and I appreciate that Panasonic managed to squeeze viewfinder in both of these cameras, but the viewfinder is not particularly impressive to be honest. Again, the only difference is that the viewfinder is tiltable on GX9. 
Neither of these cameras is mainly intended for video, but both still shoot very nice 4K video up to 30 frames per second with great image quality. Panasonic just knows how to make good video. The main difference is that the GX9 has larger crop in 4K because it doesn't use multi-aspect ratio sensor. The crop is pretty significant on the GX9, so I sometimes have to compensate for that by using ultra-wide lens. There is a crop on LX100 Mark II as well, but not as large, both have great 1080p video quality as well. In my opinion, Panasonic has the best 1080p image quality of all manufacturers, and on both GX9 and LX100 Mark II it is indeed great, although I think that the GX9 is a bit better and it is not really worse than the G9 or GH5S. Advantage of LX100 Mark II is that it has very smooth power zoom, which makes smooth zoom-ins very easy. The main limitation for video is the lack of mic input jack. I understand it on LX100 Mark II, because there it is a compromise made to keep the size down, but on the GX9 I would really like to have it, and I have to use internal mic or external recorder. UI is also the same on both, and in my opinion probably the best on the market right now, especially the main menu is very well organized, quick menu also contains everything that you might want to change on the go, and you can control everything using the touchscreen. Both cameras also use the same BLG10E battery, and the battery life is also very similar. Both should last about a day of typical still shooting, but I recommend having at least one or two spare batteries, especially if you intend to shoot 4K video. Both can be charged through USB, which is great, although having USB-C would be even better. When choosing between the LX100 Mark II and the GX9, it mostly comes down to three questions. The first one is, do you want to be changing lenses, or you just want to use one all-round lens? The second question is whether you prefer having smaller camera or having tiltable screen and viewfinder. The third question is whether you like classic exposure controls or film style controls on LX100 Mark II. My personal choice of these two cameras is the GX9, which I also own, because I'm willing to sacrifice some of that portability for tiltable screen, and I prefer using micro four thirds lenses that I already own. On the other hand, LX100 Mark II may be better camera for those who just want better image quality than with one inch sensor cameras while keeping the size down and don't want to bother with lens changing. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you like this video and that you have found it to be useful, stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content, I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in a comment section and see you next time.